Romantic music features developments and composers. The word romanticism was first used to describe new ideas in painting and literature towards the end of the 18th century. This word was later taken up by musicians to describe the changes in musical style which took place soon after the turn of the century. Unlike classical composers, romantic composers aimed for a more powerful expression of emotion, often revealing their most innermost thoughts and feelings. Romantic music is not just about the emotion of love, it can also be about hate or death, positive or negative feelings. Many romantic composers took an interest in art and literature and themes such as far off lands, the distant past, dreams, night and moonlight, rivers, lakes and forests, nature and the seasons, the joy and pain of love, fairy tales, the supernatural and magic. Some composers of the period are here. You can see that Beethoven is in the crossover era um, because he's also known as a classical composer. But other famous ones include Chopin, Schumann, Wagner, Verdi, Brahms, Tchaikovsky, Dvorak, Grieg, Rimsky, Korsakov, Korsakov Elga, Mahler, the list goes on and on. And the reason most of these are still very famous is their music is often played today, but also because their music and their manuscripts have survived and people still play them today. As romantic composers widened the range of the musical material, we find richer harmonies, more passionate melodies and greater use of chromaticism, in other words, accidentals. Chroma is Greek for colour. There was an enormous increase in the size of the orchestra. The tuba was added to the brass section. Valves were invented, which gave the brass um, section more flexibility. It meant it could play a lot more instruments, uh, sorry, a lot more notes. Composers wrote for the woodwind instruments in three or even fours. The piccolo, cor anglais, bass clarinet and double bassoon were also added to the orchestra of the Romantic era. A larger string section was also formed to accommodate the extra sound. As you can imagine, the, with adding a lot more brass instruments to the orchestra, the violins and the, all the string sections started to get drowned out. So they needed to add in um, a lot more of these instruments to balance the sound. There's a more varied percussion. In other words, things like bongos were added. There was a larger range of pitch and volumes was now more possible. New combinations of instruments were brought about. A rich variety of compositions resulted ranging from piano pieces and songs to large spectacular works. The majority of large works were by Wagner, Berlioz, Mahler and Richard Strauss. And here's an example of an orchestral piece from the era. As you can hear, there are a lot more sounds and interesting combinations that are used. The German lead. The plural for lead is Lieder, which translates as a song. Songs began to develop in the Romantic period for solo, voice and piano. There were two main types. There was the strophic, same music for every verse, and the through composed. Different music for each verse. The voice and words fit very closely together and they reflected each other. A lot of it was um, based on the idea of word painting. The piano is more than just an accompaniment in these compositions. It is a partner to the voice. Schubert is perhaps the greatest composer of the German leads. He wrote over 600, including the Earl King, the Trout and to Sylvia. Other composers of this style were Schumann, Brahms, Wolf, or Wolf and Richard Strauss. Sometimes a composer might set a whole group of poems linked to the same idea or theme. Sometimes these were called song cycles. And here's an example of a German lead. A very famous one, Brahms' Lullaby. Obviously, being a German lead, they were sung in German. Music for the piano. 
Several improvements were made to the piano in the 19th century. For example, more notes, a metal frame was added, and the piano gained a richer sound and gradually a wider range of notes. The sustaining pedal began to be used to a much wider extent. The most famous piano composers of the time were Schubert, Mendelssohn, Chopin, Schumann, Liszt and Brahms. And here's an example. They wrote sonatas one for one instrument or a soloist with accompanying instruments. A short um, and short pieces, short pieces, sorry, such as the waltz, mazurka, polonaise, and mood and character pieces, which included the impromptu, the romance, the song without words, which is a prelude, the nocturne, the ballad, the intermezzo, and the rhapsody. I'll play this one while we're talking. Many pieces shared contrasting moods and were in ternary form. Another piece of the time was the etude, which is a study. It was meant to improve the playing technique of the player. This period saw the rise of the virtuoso, a person with extraordinary musical skill, such as Paganini, the violinist, people thought he had made a pact with the devil because he was so good, and Liszt, the pianist, he was, a very concerned, um, was very concerned with showmanship. development in the Romantic era was program music. As links were formed between music, painting and literature, composers started to compose program music, music that tells a story. The opposite is absolute music, music without a story. There are three main types of program music for the orchestra and these are program symphony, for example Beethoven's Pastoral Symphony, the Symphony Fantastic, which was about a young man who is in love. He dreams about her and she becomes a melody in his mind. This melody is an idea fix. It keeps coming round again, a recurring theme. It is by Berlioz. There's also the Concert Overture. The Concert Overture is one movement program piece for orchestra. It is intended for performance at a concert. For example, Fingal's Cave by Mendelssohn and Tchaikovsky's 1812 Overture and Romeo and Juliet. This is Tchaikovsky's 1812 Overture, the famous one with the cannons. As you could hear there, that was the cannons getting let off. <laughs> and the other um, type of program music was the symphonic poem, the tune poem. It was invented by Liszt. It is one, a one movement program piece for orchestra. Liszt used a device called the thematic transformation, a basic theme that is constantly being changed in mood and character, like the idea fix. Liszt wrote a thematic piece called Hamlet. Other examples are Dance Macabre by Saint Sans, that one by Smetna, a Night on Bear Mountain by Mazursky, The Sorcerer's Apprentice by Dukas, and that one by Strauss. And I'll play this one for you. This is an example by St. Sans. It's actually from Carnival of the Animals, The Swan. Other developments at the time were incidental music, which we use a lot of in our movies and films. It is music specially composed to be heard at certain points during the performance of a play, to set the mood, to cover the scenery, changed or as background music. Again, these, these developments that we use in our commonplace today in any TV show we watch, any movie we watch, the incidental music is there to set the mood, set the scene and all those sorts of things. It all started in the Romantic era. And the last one is the suites, and I'll play this one as I'm talking. These are several pieces of incidental music gathered together, intended for a play. For example, Swan Lake, Sleeping Beauty, The Nutcracker, all three by Tchaikovsky, A Midsummer Night's Dream by Mendelssohn, 
and Peer Gint by Greig. And this is the um, peer, part of the Peer Gint suite in the Hall of the Mountain King. It's a very famous piece and I'm sure you've all heard it before. The concerto. Changes were made to the form of the concerto during the Romantic period. Instead of a double exposition, there was now a single exposition, usually with the soloist entering immediately, sharing the themes with the orchestra. The cadenza was now written out by the composer. So instead of um, the actual performer, who was the soloist, in the concerto showing and demonstrating whatever they wanted to and whatever skills they wanted to, like a jazz musician might these days, or a rock musician in terms of a solo performance, the um, composer took back the control and wrote out the actual condenser, the very fancy part, the very fancy ending for the performer because, as I said, they wanted more control. Other changes for the concerto include, while well, I play this one, Different numbers of movements were used by the different composers. Mendelssohn wrote pieces with three movements, Liszt did pieces with just one movement. There was a much larger orchestra. Growth of the virtuoso, in other words, the famous um, performer, solo performer. More excitement and drama, more competition between the orchestra and the soloist. And piano and violin became the main concerto instruments of the time. time also became a rise of nationalism. By the middle of the 19th century, music was dominated by Germany. However, composers from other countries began to feel they should break away. They used folk tunes, dance rhythms and local legends for this purpose. Now one famous little piece, which is not necessarily an example of uh, nationalism, but was by the composer Rimsky-Korsakov, is Flight of the Bumblebee, which I'll play now. But other famous composers of this era of um, nationalism. From Russia we had Mazursky, Rimsky-Korsakov who wrote this piece of the flight of the bumblebee, Borodin and from Bohemia was Smetana, Norway was Grieg with the Pierre suite and from Spain there was Albaniz, Granados and Thala. Main features of romantic music was the freedom of form and design. It was personal and emotional at this time. There were song-like melodies that were lyrical as, many, as well as many chromatic harmonies and discords. So a lot of the music was intentionally made to sound dissonant. Dramatic contrasts of dynamics and pitch. Big orchestras due mainly to the brass and the invention of the valve. They had to compensate by adding lots and lots of other um, violins and a string section in there. Wide variety of pieces, for example, songs of up to, um, were up to five hours for a Wagner opera. Imagine going to an opera that lasted that long. Program music, music that tells a story. Shape was brought to work through the use of recurring themes. There was great technical virtuosity. Nationalism, a reaction against the German influence. And that is romantic music. <laughs> 